Hey everybody, Nikki Niveson, a conservation educator here at the Salado Wildlife Education Center. Thanks for tuning in once again for another Habitat Series video. And we're gonna talk about a, a group of animals that are nocturnal, but are highly misunderstood in the state of Kentucky, which are bats. Now in the state of Kentucky, we have 16 species of bats which are really interesting. Now, a lot of people think we got really big bats. We actually don't, they're quite small. We have three that are federally endangered, which is the Indiana bat, the gray bat, and the Virginia big-eared bat. And we also have one that is federally threatened, which is the Northern long-eared bat. Now, like I said, we don't have fruit bats in Kentucky. These guys are quite small. And as you can see right here on a replica that we've got, bats are tiny in the state of Kentucky. They're very, very small. They're about the size of your hand if you think about it. Now bats are very important. So if you've heard in some of the other videos, some of our wildlife, they're nature's pest control. Bats are one of those. Now, in the state, we can find them in a variety of areas. Now, some of our species live fully in the forest year round, doesn't matter what time of year. Others live in the caves year round. And then we have some like the endangered Indiana bat that live over winter in the caves and then move to a roost tree in the summertime. So they live in our trees. Now, since this is our woodland habitat series of videos, we're going to talk about why trees are important to our bat species. Now, living trees, they provide food, a food source for our bugs. So all of our bat species in the state of Kentucky are insectivores. They love to eat our bugs. That's why I say they're our nature's pest control because they eat all of the bugs that we don't want around. They also provide a place for shelter and raising their youngs. Now, red bats in the state of Kentucky use the leaves of living trees to raise their babies. And then you have trees that are either have exfoliating bark or they're dead and dying snag trees that provide a roost location for maternity colonies. So female bats will make colonies of just females where they can raise all the babies, kind of like the Indiana bats. They live in the roost trees in the summertime and our biologists will actually go out to see where these roost trees are to see how many bat populations we've got in the state of Kentucky. Now, since we talked about the habitats and why it's important to have our trees around, all kinds, living and dead, if they're not in danger of anything, we need to talk about an adaptation that bats have that is highly important. Now you might hear in the owl video about how owls have a certain adaptation that help them make wonderful nocturnal wildlife and how they are good nocturnal predators. Bats have a different adaptation that they have. Now have you ever heard the saying blind as a bat? Well I have and I kind of feel like it right now because I don't have my glasses on but that's okay. Bats actually aren't blind. They can see very well but they have an adaptation that allows them to use their hearing, their sense of hearing over their sense of sight. And so we're gonna demonstrate that here in just a second. But first I have to put on my giant bat ears. Hopefully they'll stay, right? So bats in the state of Kentucky have large ears according to their body size. So they're very small, but their ears are large. And the reason why is they use something we like to call echolocation. Now, if you take the word and you spread it apart, you have echo and location, meaning they emit a sound wave with little clicks, little clicks like that, and that will send out a sound wave. And what will happen is that we have, it'll bounce off an object and it'll come back or create an echo back to the bat. Now they can take that echo and determine the location of a food source or of an object that they don't want to hit. Now in our demonstration here, right, our little sound wave bounced off. It hit Isabella instead of the food source that we wanted, which was this fly on the tree, right? Our flying insects. So echolocation is an amazing tool that bats will use. They have their big ears, they'll send out their sound wave and they can determine the difference between a food source and an object that they don't want to go near, right? So echolocation is amazing 
thing to learn about. I wish I could be an echolocator. So echolocation, we use that with bats and we take that and use it in human reality, kind of like submarines. They use sonar to locate things underneath the water. And that's where we get it. We get that stuff from nature. Now, some fun facts about bats in the state of Kentucky. Our largest bat is the hoary bat. Our smallest one is the small footed bat. And then there are about 1300 species of bats worldwide. Now, a lot of people, if you've ever watched vampire movies and things, people are scared of bats because of that. But in the state of Kentucky, we don't have any vampire bats. Out of those 1300 species worldwide, only three are vampire species and none of them are in the state of Kentucky or even in North America. So we don't have to worry about that at all. Now, some of you guys want to know how you can help our bat species in the state of Kentucky. So what you can do, you can come and you can build a bat house somewhere for them to live. Now, if you have a farm and you don't have a place to put them, you can put these bat houses up. If you go on the website, Fish and Wildlife's website, or even the federal Fish and Wildlife website, you can find plans to build your own bat house, which is a fun project for your class to do or something to do with your family. And you can also join Kentucky Wild, which is a great way to help our bat species and our bat biologists do the data collection that they need to determine how many species of bats we have in the state and how our threatened and endangered species are actually doing. So thanks for tuning in to this Habitat Day series video again, and I hope you learned so much about bats and have a new respect for them. Thanks for tuning in.